The, uh, the first section we're going to talk about is hydraulic systems, the actual mechanics, the mechanical stuff, the hardware involved in hydraulics, and what is a hydraulic system. I know that some of you can, can take them apart blindfolded. You might know the systems, a system so well. Uh, other people are not very familiar with hydraulic systems. So we're going to at least spend some time on here, even though, quite frankly, you could spend days just on hydraulic systems alone. We're then going to talk about the fluids themselves. Uh, there are a wa quite a wide variety of hydraulic fluids. In your own business, you maybe get used to one or two of them without knowing that there's, there's another dozen different types out there. So we're going to go over what some of these are, what their differences are. Uh, you might learn a thing or two about a hydraulic oil you didn't know before. And then the third thing we're going to take a look at are some trends in different types of hydraulic oils. Um, what kind of, relatively speaking, what's new with hydraulic oils. All right. So our first item, hydraulic systems. We'll start talking about hydraulic systems, and we will begin with a basic, talking about basic hydraulic systems. We're going to kind of build one from components, then we'll briefly discuss uh, what's different about an industrial type hydraulic system and a typical industrial hydraulic system, and then a typical mobile hydraulic system on mobile equipment, okay? Of course, there are great similarities between all these guys, but some important, very important differences between the two. So let's starting with our basic hydraulic systems. And a basic hydraulic system, um, a couple of them you might be familiar with, but a basic hydraulic system takes advantage uh, or utilizes what's called the hydraulic advantage, or sometimes hydraulic leverage. And that is using a relatively small amount of power to do to lift heavy things. This is my demo, which I'm sure violates some OSHA hazard, some you know, requirements somewhere. Okay, all right. So that's what's called hydraulic advantage. That's why we do hydraulics. You can get a small electric motor. Thank you very much, June. Everybody, a hand for June. You can get in an industrial setting a relatively small electric motor to operate a hydraulic system that's lift, lifting tons and tons and tons of stuff. Okay, so that's the important part of, of uh, hydraulic leverage. So now we're going to build for you, component by component, a typical hydraulic system. And again, your indulgence if, you've, if you know, already know this kind of stuff, um, but this is, this is the basics. And it all starts with a pump. Okay, a hydraulic pump is the heart of a hydraulic system. All right, this is hooked up to a power source, and it's creating flow. It's moving your fluid along. Um, it's, there are, it's one of the two top critical pieces in a hydraulic system you look at. We could spend the better part of a day studying just hydraulic pumps. There are lots of different types and lots of different styles and different specifications. That's not our purpose here today, uh, but just know that a pump is key, and it's always a critical part of the system. Okay, the system will also has a have a reservoir. Reservoir is where your hydraulic fluid is kept. It's, of course, it's going to supply the pump. Uh, usually you need some sort of reservoir because your hydraulic system will use varying volumes of hydraulic fluid. So sometimes you need all the fluid in the system and you're drawing down the reservoir. Sometimes you only need a little bit of it. Okay, so your, your needs are going to vary. You need to have a reservoir. Um, we, could, we could spend a, a good half hour just talking about reservoir design, but again, uh, we won't. Um, the third part of our system is our actuator. In this case, it's a hydraulic cylinder. Okay? This is where the useful work is getting done. Okay? This is where we, we're trying to make something move in one direction or another. In the case of a cylinder, you're trying to get some sort of a reciprocal motion. Right? It's going up or down or back or forth. This actuator could also be what's called a hydraulic motor. It takes the fluid pressure and motion and turns it into a spinning motion. And usually between a combination of hydraulic motors, pistons, and various lever devices, you can get any kind of compound motion that you want. It's all, it's all complex from there. All right? you, can get, you can get the kind of motion at different rates and different forces. Um, by using different pieces of hardware as actuators. And then the next component of our system is our valve. Okay? 
Control valves and hydraulic system are the other really critical part that goes on here. A control valve, this is going to be a very simple one that we have here, but control valves can be very complex. Um, if anyone's ever taken apart an automatic transmission, they have what's in a valve body and seen all the different channels and parts and pieces that go in that. That's a good example. That's a hydraulic system that's actually part of an automatic transmission. Okay, that's the control system. Um, those kinds of valve bodies exist on lots of other hydraulic units as well. Okay, and there are very, very tiny tolerances machined within those units. So things can get stuck in there. That's why, they're, that's why valve systems and control systems are so critical. And we'll talk about that a little later as well. Okay. And then kind of uh, tying this all together is the piping and the hydraulic fluid. Okay, the hydraulic fluid is, uh, we'll of course spend more time talking about that, but it's certainly a critical part of our system. Our fluid has to behave in certain ways in order to get our system to behave in certain ways. So this is the basics of a hydraulic system and how it works. And if you want to, if you can imagine how this is going, our pump is putting fluid all the way here to this end of the cylinder. It's pushing it down. As it's pushing it down, the fluid on this side of the cylinder is getting pushed back through the valve body, ending up back in our reservoir. If you can envision us changing this valve, and now the fluid is going here and here instead, the pump is now directing it down here, moves the cylinder up or the piston up this way in the cylinder, right? So you've changed, you reversed your motion, and it's now pushing the fluid back to the reservoir. Very simple, very basic hydraulic system. And there are a few notable components that are, I think of them as options, if you will, uh, that you'll see, you may or may not see on various hydraulic systems. And we'll go over a few of those things now. Uh, accumulator. An accumulator is a big, high-volume, high-pressure device that can be on a hydraulic system where you know your system at some point is going to very suddenly need a huge volume very quickly. So you, if you know this system was going to need to go this direction instantaneously, and you figure, you know what, this pump can't generate enough liquid to go in there to make it go really fast. So you have stuff built up in here, that you can count on to offload into here when you need to. That's what an accumulator does for you in a system. And that's why accumulators always have big safety lettering all over them, that sort of stuff. Uh, you may have a relief valve in our system. Um, oh, and check, I'm sorry, and check valves as well. That's the, the check valves keep flow going in one direction. A system relief valve, that, would, that makes sense. And then a filter, okay? We could spend another half day just talking about hydraulic filter location, hydraulic filter um, sizing, hydraulic filter specifications. Um, biggest takeaway here is, is every hydraulic system benefits from good filtration, and there are plenty of ways to screw it up by uh, like, like buying really mediocre filters for your hydraulic system. Um, but, it's, but it's often seen in line, and a, and a good place for a filter, that's one of the good places, is on its way back to the reservoir. All right, let's see, do I have anything else? Oh yeah, there is one more that goes up there, heat exchanger. Okay. These systems by themselves generate heat. They may also be in an environment that is hot. Um, we do ask the fluid uh, to carry some heat, and we need to exchange it, we need to cool it, get it cooled down with a heat exchanger. Sometimes these are, are air-based heat exchangers, you know, you blow it across a radiator essentially. Sometimes it's a water type, uh, uh, tube and shell type heat exchanger if you have like cold plant water going by, all depending on what your needs are. Okay, so this is our very basic hydraulic system with some components added in there give you an idea of how these systems work. Um, a typical industrial, typical looking industrial hydraulic system. Uh, one of these guys, one of these little power packs. Um, you can see up here it's got a reservoir. 
Uh, we've got a little sight glass in here to tell us how much we've got in there. This right here, this unit is the pump, hooked direct line or coupled to an electric motor, right? So the electric motor is running at a constant uh, 1800 RPM, pumping up out of the reservoir through here. Um, it's actually bleeding off a little bit that's going over to this heat exchanger that's on here and the rest of these going by these valves out to these outlets and these are probably configured with some sort of a uh, piping or quick release off to some other hydraulic system there. Uh, the big, one of the biggest differences between these hydraulics images we have here and what you see or what I see in a plant when I go out and visit plants is that these are a lot cleaner <laughs> than the ones I'm used to seeing. Okay, that's a typical type of industrial hydraulic system. Their counterpart in the world of earth moving equipment, uh, mobile equipment, are these guys. We've got something from a Volvo and from a Caterpillar. You have to look a little closer to kind of pick out the components. Why? You know, because they're all wedged in here, right? You don't, have a, you don't have the luxury of a lot of space on a piece of mobile equipment. But if you look, you can still configure to see, okay, what looks like a pump. Um, you can see that's the pump part up there. Uh, Caterpillar does a good job. They've got filtration, plenty of good filtration built into their systems and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, um, a lot tighter space to work with when you're designing and building one of these systems. And that um, um, leads us to take a look at the comparison and the differences between, between these two types of systems, between what's on mobile equipment and what's in an industrial setting, a factory setting. Um, mobile equipment's going to have a smaller reservoir. You just don't have the space for a huge reservoir in a bulldozer somewhere like you do on a factory floor. Okay. A smaller reservoir offers plenty of challenges, right? Your, 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 uh, your hydraulic fluid isn't spending as much time there, so it doesn't have as much chance to give off, to get rid of the bubbles and to give off heat, so it gets taxed a little harder. The drives are a little bit different. Remember, our, our plant had a constant RPM electric motor driving that pump, okay, on a, on a vehicle in a piece of equipment, maybe hooked up to a PTO, some sort of a, a mechanical drive that's going to vary with RPM, um, have some variance. So that, that can be a performance difference. And they're definitely more difficult to cool in mobile equipment. You know, if your if you're hydraulic unit and a plant is still running hot, well, you just hook up a bigger heat exchanger. You have plenty of room over there to mount this thing or something like that. You don't have that luxury on a piece of mobile equipment, right? And plus, it's tucked in the middle of somewhere, so it's not getting great airflow. And it may even be just going right by an exhaust manifold, so there's plenty of heat in the system. So they are definitely more difficult to cool. And your hydraulic fluid is exposed to uh, heat often for a longer period of time. OK. And that leads us to our first question break, because I've covered the basics of hydraulic systems, the actual system itself. Does anybody have any system questions so far? Yeah, Doug. Yeah, okay, and if you didn't hear that question, the question is, is the filter on the return side the proper place for it? The answer is, it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> uh, there are times, and, and, and that is good to filter your stuff that is going back into your reservoir. Um, but it can also be, if it's critical, good to filter it even on its way into the pump because dirty oil will damage a pump. Okay? Now, there's a drawback to that. Okay? that, that's where that and that's where all these location arguments start. Right? Because if that starts to plug up, you can start to cavitate your pump because you're trying to suck too hard on this filter. So say, well, what's my chances of cavitating it? And then you also can consider filtering right on the outlet of the pump so the stuff makes may the dirty stuff may make it through the pump and you don't cavitate it, but you definitely don't want it going into your valve body. Okay, so that's in my opinion that's where you want it the cleanest. That all said, there's no there's no rule against having multiple filters in multiple places, because when you're going back to the filter, by the time that stuff has made it through the circuit, 
you know, if you have if you have a wiper seal problem on a on a on a hydraulic ram that's going back and forth, you basically have a way that dirt can travel into the system. So by the time that oil is getting back to the reservoir, it's already been passed there and it's maybe picked up some of that dirt, right? It'd be nice if you could take it out even before it gets the res hits the reservoir. Um, anyway, those lots of lots of discussions have been had about the proper location <laughs> of filters. Okay, coming up next in our section two here, we're going to talk about the fluids themselves.